everyone. So today we are back. We're going to do another fun project video. I was completely inspired by the one I just did, which was the old barnwood look. It's actually sitting there in the background and I actually loved how that came out. So I thought, why not try a different technique? I'm always looking for new and fun and different techniques um, to try out. And I figured, why not do it with you? It's way more fun that way. So today I have this piece which is this cool wooden star. I think um, normally it was like $44 for it and it was like 70% off. So I figured I cannot pass that up. I'm always looking for things to paint. And right now I'm still in this lovely boot. So, you know, my mobility just isn't there yet for getting back to work full time. So fun little projects like this are great. So today we're gonna use some chalk paint. We're gonna use glaze. We're gonna use a liming wax all kinds of fun stuff. I'd like to introduce products that maybe some of you haven't used before or you haven't seen how they've been used before. And so, yeah, we're just gonna dive right in and get started on giving this star some character. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and- All right, you guys, we're gonna go through this step by step so you can see how um, an effect like this is done. And we're starting with the first step, which is the layer of paint. Now I have gone ahead and put my cardboard down underneath so that I don't paint all over my countertop. Um, I've chosen two colors by Annie Sloan, which I absolutely still am a huge fan of Annie Sloan chalk paint. I've chosen the Svenska blue and the old white. And the Svenska blue, in case you're wondering, is pretty much the old duck egg. She reformulated recently all of her um, colors, and so this is that color reformulated. The color is a tad bit different. I almost think it's actually prettier than the original duck egg. So today I'm gonna use, if you notice, I'm not using my Klingon brushes. Oh, what? No, today we're gonna use, because I wanna know, I wanna make sure that everybody knows, look, you don't have to have super expensive brushes when you're just getting started. You don't have to go out and spend $35 a brush. These brushes that I use, these chip brushes, now would I paint a piece of furniture with it? No, I wouldn't, but I want you to understand that they are useful. And if you're just getting started and you just wanna try it out and see if you like painting, then something like this is, is super affordable. You can get them pretty much anywhere and it would allow you to kind of, without putting out a ton of money with your budget, um, to try out the painting process. So um, also with a project like this, we're gonna be sanding, we're gonna be glazing, we're doing all kinds of things that we don't need to worry about brush strokes. These will, if you were to paint a smooth surface, probably give you a little brush stroke because they're kind of, I don't wanna say they're rough, but they're just, they're not, you know, they're not the quality brush, but it will work perfectly for a project like this. So I honestly have no idea what I'm doing as far as the look. I'm just kind of going. So right now, all we're gonna do is get on our paint because this is gonna be our underlayment. If you didn't watch the other video on the barn wood, then you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But basically, um, as we layer up and build these up, then once we put our other products on top and we start to sand it back, that's when you start to see these colors. So there's pretty much no rhyme or reason how I'm painting the order of the blue and the white. And as you can see, I'm actually not even doing like a full base. You can tell where I'm leaving it kind of dry in certain areas. And that's because I'm going to go over that with the blue. I want kind of a mixture of this blue and white throughout the star. So when I sand it back, you're going to see all these different colors. And I don't want it to be uniform. I mean, you could. If you wanted to do certain areas blue and certain areas white, um, you could absolutely do that. For me, I want to have different variations of the blue and the white kind of together. So I'm literally just doing a little bit of each color. And there's no right or wrong to this. It's just how you want it to look in the end. And right now, I honestly don't even know how I want it to look. So we're just kind of having fun and going with it and seeing what comes of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead 
And, oh, I wanted to tell you guys where you can get um, ship brushes. I said you can pretty much get them anywhere, and that's the truth. However, if you have a Harbor Freight close to you in your neighborhood, that's the place to get them, you guys, because Harbor Freight has the best deal. You can get, like, a box of, I want to say, like, 24 and it's like $11. I mean, it's super reasonable. And so that's what I do because these are throwaway brushes. That's the other thing I want to mention is basically one time you use these, you don't really want to wash them and try to reuse them. Now you could if you wanted to, but I wouldn't, the, the bottom line is the hairs on, on these brushes and um, they're not very resilient. They do fall out and probably trying to wash these um, and reuse them is not going to be a great idea. So they're kind of like a throwaway brush. So being that they're so cheap though, it makes it really um, affordable to use them for a one-time use and then kind of be done with it. So um, I'm gonna add some blue over here because I think I feel like I have too much white. And again, with this, I'm not so concerned that I'm you know, mixing my colors or smearing my colors. I really want it to dry funky where I have all these different colors kind of mixed together. So uh, we're going to go ahead. Um, I am done now with this portion. I know it looks really weird, but we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to go on to our next step. Okay, okay, you guys, so we're back. We've gone ahead and let that dry. Now, Annie Sloan paints dry relatively quick. Today's kind of a wet, cloudy day but I gave it about 30 to 45 minutes and it's pretty much dry. So I wanna show you guys up close what I did. All I did was just try to basically use the two colors. I blended, I mixed, I kind of just overlapped. It really doesn't matter for this look. Um, all I wanted to do was make sure that I covered the entire star and that is what I've done. So as you can see, I've got blue on white, like just kind of crazy and you know, that's gonna give it more character and make it look really cool. So now our next step, because this is dry, is we're gonna go ahead and go in with our Van Dyke glaze, our Van Dyke brown glaze, and we are going to coat it. Now, one thing I haven't decided yet is are we gonna wipe the glaze back or are we gonna let it sit overnight? On the barn wood piece that I recently did, I let it sit overnight um, and I didn't wipe it back, which is the traditional way when you glaze, um, is that you typically put your glaze on and then you wipe it back. Uh, I think maybe, I'll just see, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what I feel like doing, but um, what I feel like doing is getting the lid off this can and it doesn't wanna come off. <laughs> All right, so we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take my foam brush and dip into my glaze and wipe off just a little bit and basically just start to put on my glaze. And like I showed you guys in that video, if you didn't see it, then I'll just repeat myself. Go ahead and put it on on the heavy side. Um, what we want to do is leave behind a lot of this brown glaze. And I know right now it looks like, oh wow, we are covering up all that cool paintwork we just did. And we kind of are, but when we reveal with the next step, the sanding, that's when you start to see the effects of the glaze and the paint together creating that style. So all I'm doing is just laying down my glaze, trying to get it all over the piece. Again, this is not a thing that has to be perfect. We can just put it on and let it go. It doesn't have to be, every piece doesn't even have to be covered. Um, some areas can be heavier than others uh, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just going to create more character to your piece when you have that imperfected look. One thing I would make sure that you do is make sure, and this is kind of a hard piece to be honest with you because there's all these different angles, but I would make sure that you cover, um, you make sure you uh, get any of the drips. Don't let anything drip because you don't want to sand so hard. Um, the idea behind the sanding part of it is to reveal what's underneath and you don't want to have to sand so hard if you have a drip that, you know, you're going to have to sand through your color. So just make sure you go back if there's any drips. And as you can see, I'm dipping a lot in the glaze because I really want to get a lot on and um, cover this piece. 
Now, like I said, I haven't decided yet. I'm going to cover it all first and then decide if I want to go ahead and wipe it away a little bit. Now, you could wipe it away lightly. You could wipe it away totally. The idea behind this look is not to wipe, though, the entire glaze off. Um, I want more than, and, and why you would do that is because typically when you're glazing, um, you're not trying to cover up your whole piece. What you're trying to do is get that glaze to stick in certain areas of the piece and create that aged look. So, you know, 99% of the time when you're using glaze on a project, um, that's what you're doing. You're getting it, to, the glaze will stick to the crevices and to um, different, you know, embellishments on the piece. So... I don't know, you guys. I think I'm going to leave this and not wipe it back. I, I just want to see what happens because here's the thing. If I feel like um, by doing that it uh, isn't the right look, I can always sand it more and take away more of that glaze. So I think I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and dry, and then I will come back and we'll get to the next step, and we will sand away, and I'll show you how cool it starts to look. Right now, it doesn't look like much, but it will, I promise. All right, you guys, we are back, and it does not look very pretty at all, <laughs> but don't fret. It will, I well, I can't guarantee you, but I can only tell you that from the last project that I did, it looked really ugly like this as well, and then once I started sanding it, it looked really cool. So, just so you guys can see it, there's no perfection here. This is just kind of glaze put all over. Now, I did decide off camera to kind of wipe it back a little bit, and then I changed my mind. So I ended up kind of reapplying a little more glaze, but I just want you guys to see the super imperfection of the way it's put on because these strokes and inconsistencies in the finish right now are not going to be a huge ordeal. What we're going to do is take our um, sanding pad, and this is one of the Annie Sloan sanding pads. They make three fine, coarse, and or fine, medium, and coarse. This is the coarse one. I found that it really worked well um, on my last project, so I'm going to use it again. You don't have to get the Annie Sloan ones. I just happen to have these on hand. These are pretty much equivalent to a 220 grit sanding pad. Um, and you can get those at your local hardware store. So they are different than the sandpaper. I always, always stress that because I just want to make sure you guys know that the sanding pads are not equivalent to a 220 grit sanding paper. They are a lot softer. So with that being said, let's go ahead and kind of do a little sanding reveal to see what happens here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take one of the sides and start to sand back. And I'm only going to do probably one or two of the sides on camera um, so you guys can see it. And then I'll finish the rest of it off camera because it's obviously a little loud. Um, and we'll see what happens. So I can already see, and probably right now at the angle that um, you're looking at this, is you can't totally see the multicolors coming through. So I'm going to show you up close here. Um, that you can kind of start to see this one area that I sanded. There's a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the white. So um, the colors are very complementary and very soft. And that's the idea is that we're not going to have like, you know, a black and white kind of thing going on here where you've got two totally opposite colors. This is meant to, and you saw what I did before I glazed it, it was completely um, blended. And so that was kind of the look I was going for. So... Um, you can sand as hard or as light as you want to. Um, it depends how much glaze you want to leave behind. If you can see here, um, this is kind of darker in this area, and I like that. Um, that looks really cool. So I don't want to sand it off too much. I want to leave some darker areas of the piece. And yeah, so the other thing is don't sand too incredibly hard, though, because we don't want to break through those layers of paint and expose that raw wood unless that is a look you're going for. It's not for me, so I need to be careful that I don't go too terribly hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand the rest of this off camera, and when I come back, I'll show you what um, the next step is, which is gonna be the liming wax. Right, guys, so we have uh, completely got it sanded off camera, and I know it's a little large, so it's kinda hard for you to really get the effect, so in the next segment, I'll make sure that I give you a really good picture of it. Um, but basically, this is it. It shows you can see here, this is like the blue, and then we've got the um, old white. 
It looks so incredibly cool. I really like the way this turned out. And it turned out completely different than my last project um, where I used the glaze. That one was really uh, a heavier uh, barn wood. You saw the grain more. And this one, you don't really see the grain as much on this. And um, yeah, so it's really cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the liming wax next. This is the Fusion um, mineral paint line, and this is their um, liming wax, which is a furniture sealer as well as this one. It's got kind of a cool effect with being the liming wax. As you can see, it's kind of a, a, a creamy color, and I'm gonna wipe it on. This will also help seal my piece, and then um, I'm gonna let it sit on there for a little bit, and then I will go back and wipe it off. Basically, the liming wax, um, the effect that it adds is just giving it um, more of that whitewashed look. And so that's kind of what I'm going for with this piece is I want it to look really washed out. And um, the last piece that I worked on and did, um, I'll just show you guys, I've got it here in the shop right next to me, but you can kind of see the difference. Oops, look how dark this is. And that's using that same Van Dyke glaze compared to this. So. It was a, li a little less on the glaze this time and a lot more sanding. So yeah, so this is kind of a totally different effect that we're going for. And then I'm gonna kind of fade it out even more by applying this liming wax. I don't know if you guys can see because the angle's on this star. So sorry, I'm trying to turn as much as I can. But basically I'm covering my piece right there in the liming wax. And then I'm gonna go back around after and let it I'm gonna let it sit up for a few minutes and then I'll go back. See, I'm putting it on pretty heavy because I want it washed out. And I will go back and wipe it off with my clean rag um, for the final effect. So you definitely wanna get it in all the little nooks and crannies of the piece and the corners and all that good stuff. Um, this will act, like I said, as a sealer, a top coat. Um, wax is a very durable top coat. You can also layer the wax quite a bit. Um, so you can basically wax, wipe it off, get the desired look that you want, add more wax. Um, I, I think I tell you guys this all the time, but I wax all of my kitchen cabinets and I don't care what anybody says, wax is a durable sealer if you do it right. So you can definitely, I wax a lot of my furniture pieces. It's definitely a look that gives it a different effect than the polyurethane. Um, or polyacrylic. Um, it gives it more of a soft matte finish. So I really like it. And this liming wax is really cool because, like I said, it gives it that more of, it's gonna give this more of a distressed, grayed out, washed out look. And that's the effect that I want for this star. And so yeah, you could use clear wax if you wanted to on this. You could go in with the uh, dark aging wax, black, whatever you prefer. But just for this project itself, I really wanted to kind of wash it out more. So I'm just gonna show you guys what that kind of looks like layered up with wax, looks kind of funky. But as soon as I go back and I buff that off and I'll just show you one section and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. But basically all you do now is just take your clean rag and you just kind of kind of wipe. Now you don't have to go really heavy um, because you know you did let the wax sit on there for a little bit. Then you wanna go back and you wanna do nice clean sweeping motions. Um, typically what I do if I'm looking for more of a high shine out of my wax, then after it's really set up for quite a bit, um, a few hours, I will go back with a clean rag once again and I will buff it and that will bring out some of the shine. You'll see in the final segment because I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can show you guys right now. Wiping it away gives it kind of a matte finish and I'll buff it out a little bit so that it'll have a little bit more of a satin finish, okay? All right, you guys, so we are done. We are at the end of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and show you our final product. I'm also gonna show you the one that I did the other day just as a comparison so you can see how you can use the same exact product and it can come out two totally different ways with different looks. So, ta-da, here is our final product. I really like it. It's actually, I had no idea when I first started actually what look I wanted to go for. I mean, I kind of had an idea, 
but I didn't really know how much I was going to sand back. I didn't know how light I wanted it, and I didn't want it to look like the other project that I did the other day, which was kind of heavy. So let me actually show you. I've got it right here. Let me show you how the same product can end up looking entirely different. Look how brown, obviously, this one is, and the difference with the star. So same product, you guys. It's just we used it in different ways. So what we used today, and I'll list it down below as well, we used the um, Annie Sloan paints. I used the Svenska blue and the old white, and you can totally see the blue. I was kind of nervous at first. You wouldn't see that, but you can totally see the blue that came through. I also used the General Finishes Van Dyke Brown Glaze, and then we finished it off with the Limeen Wax, which that's just a you know an option. You could just go with clear wax. You could go with a poly. And then you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to see, but it does have, it's very smooth. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. The liming wax just gives it more of that whitewashed aged look. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really happy. I'm going to show you really close so you guys can see. How cool is that? The idea is, it's not supposed to look perfect, you guys. I've seen these types of finishes and things hanging on walls at vintage shops when we've been out over the weekend. And you guys, you could do this. It's not that much. I used three, four products. Again, same kind of thing that I used with the um, board the other day. Not a big deal. And if you don't want to get the liming wax, you don't have to. It just adds that extra little bit of aging. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. It was really fun to do this. I love doing these types of projects. And thank you for being subscribers. Keep subscribing so you can continue to get my videos. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.